we had all our questions answered, right? <laughs> all your questions going to the game was answered. But hey, 420 yards of offense. Uh, Bears yep. win. The defense shuts them down at the end. Gets off. Uh, gets off the field on fourth down. 250 rush yards. Offensive line I thought was dominant uh, going into the game. We thought they had an advantage over the Cardinals front seven, and, and that proved to be true. Uh, Khalil Herbert. I thought had some of his burst back, Pat. And mm -hmm. uh, in the Bears run game, they like to get the running back one on one with a secondary guy, a cornerback or a safety. And they won that matchup all day. And, and in the defense, they would have to do the Bears jump out early 21 0 and end up winning the game. Yeah, but listen, I'm going to bring us down, guys. That game should have been a blowout. Yes. And there's a lot of questions I have about some coaching decisions, clock management. Um, you know, throwing the ball on first and 10 in the red zone with Justin Fields at the interception, him not handling the ball there. It's a game where, okay, they won, but did you guys not think just for a half a second after that interception, like, oh, no, here we go again. But I didn't mm -hmm. think as much as I did against Cleveland because they didn't have, you know, the, the, the talent. But mm -hmm. they won the game they should have won, but not in the fashion that is me being an analyst and a, a, a critical person on the Bears the way I wanted. Uh, mm -hmm. But there were some bright spots there. And they took advantage of what they needed to do. But you know, I got some just questions about Luke Getze's play calling, third and one. Yeah, listen, you don't have to call every play on your call sheet. Just just run something that works. It's been working all day long, right? You know, I just I, I just don't understand. There's some questions I have about that, and that's um, maybe the so, pregame I talked about him too. Here, here's my thing. I, I thought I thought DJ Moore was going to have a monster game, a monster mm -hmm. game. He got hurt early. And he came back in the game, but he was compromised, I think, from that point on. And so Cole Komet, who had his own issue, a, a quad injury, he looked like he was kind of playing hurt, but he was making huge plays. I think with, with uh, what was going on with DJ Moore and then when Cole Komet couldn't play the second half, I thought that that kind of – was a problem for the Bears, and I thought it explained maybe the little bit of lull that they went through. I think that had to do with the passing game being kind of shut down, but they managed to run the ball the whole game, and they held the ball a long time. So I'm, I, I'm trying not to be dark about this one. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, they won the game. But when you asked, did, did I ever felt, feel there was a problem? I didn't like the idea that they were without their two best weapons in the passing game and like kind of the explosive explosive portion of the passing game was over. Yeah, but the one thing though was the run game. I was like, why are you getting away yes. from the run? Just keep no, doing that, the shorten the game. Yeah. I, that's one I thing I just don't understand. He doesn't shorten the game to the way I'd like it to be done. I'll just give an example. The second, uh, second quarter, two minutes, 27 seconds, you've got the ball back like in your 25-yard line. I hate to be negative. <laughs> I'll be the negative guy here for you, Molly, after oh, a win. Right. But right. little things. It's 27 mm -hmm. seconds only ran off the clock, and they ran three straight passes. Knowing they're going to get the ball first in the second half, just run mm -hmm. the ball. You're, maybe right. maybe you bust one, you get closer, then you have a chance to maybe go for the end zone or get a field goal or something like that. But shorten the game. Take the possessions out so they can't score. Those are just situations that I don't understand why he's doing that. He did it last week in Cleveland. Um, and it's like he's not learning from that. Just to, to, to finish the game with what you have – and the strengths you have, and just just get through the game. I mean, that's that's what I would like to see instead of just calling every call on your play sheet. Yeah, it's hard when you're watching it because, as we all know, like we've been talking about all year, there's two things going on, right? There's the is the quarterback the guy, and what to do with the draft picks, and then just the game. And, and are the Bears improving? And last year they were three and fourteen, and now they're six and nine. And to be honest with you, going into the year, I, I probably had five to seven wins for the Bears. Yep. And they may get there. Right, so they're about where, if you say they're improving yeah. and getting better as a team, uh, they're about where you thought they would be. And, and Mully points out a very good point. Uh, they're not playing a lot of the, the better teams in the NFL right now, and they're still stuck in these where they lose, although uh, the Browns really beat up on Houston today, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting to watch this team. Um, to be fair, I have to say, as you watch the Cardinals, the Bears look like them last year. You have to say the Bears did improve from last year. They are a better football team than they were last year. Their O-line is better. Uh, they had injuries today, right? You can see their depth. Uh, we talked about Darnell Mooney going to the game. It was a game when, when Cole Komet and DJ Moore are a little beat up. Like you guys mentioned, you want to see him step up and become the playmaker at that moment, right? Like when uh, uh, T. Higgins steps up for the Bengals, mm -hmm. something like right. that, that. 
you don't want to see the Bears give up that touchdown, right? You don't want to see that versus uh, the Cardinals. But um, are, are the Bears improving? Did they win the game? Did they do a few things that we asked them to do going to the game? They did. Uh, that interception has got to bother you if you're if you're a Justin Fields fan watching him ha- make that run. Uh, look like the best athlete on the field and then throw the in- immediately throw the interception and see DJ more open on the post. Yeah. That was, I got to tell you, that interception, it, it was really him in a nutshell. You got the 40-yard run. And, and honestly, it, he was it was looking for a spot to kind of go down, which God bless him. He, they've told him, we don't want you getting hurt. We don't want you getting beaten up. I think, though, he didn't expect to get a block there, and if he had stayed on his feet, he might have scored. Nonetheless, he gets down. That's that's an incredible play, and it, he's the only guy who can make that play. And then that interception, you just that's him in a nutshell. Yep. That That is his and career. And in the fourth quarter, Mully. And in the fourth quarter. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And, and I, I mean, listen, they were never in danger because that Arizona team is awful. That is a bad football team. Thank God, yeah. because when the moments came, they couldn't make the play anyway. But I don't, I don't feel like that's one I'd put on my highlight reel. If I'm Justin Fields, if I'm Matt Eberflus, I just feel like they beat a really bad team. Okay, great, happy Christmas. Yeah, Olin. I mean, let's. You know, we had games like that, right? That we mm-hmm. didn't feel like we played well, but we won, and it does feel a little different in the locker room. You're celebrating. You're happy because it's a win on your on your schedule and, and your record and all that kind of stuff. But if you truly look at it as a player, you, you get those wins. You understand it. Like, all right, it's a win, but we just didn't play. I, I thought they could have played better, not made some of the mistakes, some of the coaching calls or whatnot. But it's it's an odd feeling. And I think they feel the same thing that we feel watching the game. That it's just uh, – it's a win, but it's kind of like a meh. It's one of those. Hey, you want to hear them talk about it. I'm, I'm interested in the post game to hear Justin Fields talk yeah. about his interception. Yeah. And I, I want to hear what Luke Getze has to say about – you know, his third and one call uh, instead of just running behind an offensive line, that was dominant, you know, and, and a lot of credit to Cody White here, right? He gets benched, uh, uh, gets embarrassed out there playing center, gets replaced by Tevin Jenkins, comes out today professional. Uh, that offensive line dominates the Cardinals defensive line and, and runs the ball all over them. I think uh, Khalil Herbert with a 5.6 yard average, uh, looked like they could have ran the ball all day and that's some of the frustration. And if we're just talking about frustration, it's just like, I don't mind the play action down there in the red zone, but how about we move the pocket, uh, mm-hmm. get get Justin Fields outside the pocket on a play action so he has a run pass option to get him going a little bit. Uh, it's just stuff we've been saying a lot through the years. And you guys are right. The, the Cardinals are terrible. And, Pat, you're right. Many games like this, right? And some of the things you, you watch, you know, if we're talking about uh, what frustrated you when you watch the game, it's kind of like, you know, I mean, you hear guys say, man, our offense – uh, lost energy, you know, the week before, and then you see him sitting on the bench and there's no energy, right, right. right? From the same guy who said we lost energy, right? And then I'm watching Darnell Mooney at the end of the game block and then take himself out of the game because, I don't know, I guess the block was too was too physical for him at the end of the game, right? So it's just kind of <laughs> those things, if you're frustrated, yeah. you're just frustrated watching them because you like the things they say, but then you want to see that come out in the game, mm-hmm. right? I want to see them. I, I like Justin Fields yelling at the sideline, get whatever he's yelling about. Right. If I'm a coach, I like that. I, yep. I like when I coach high school Pat and a kid's yelling at me. Yeah, you're right. I, you know, I got some responsibility, but shows me they care. Shows yep. emotion. I could yep. care less. You're never going to offend me in the middle of a football game. Yep. You cannot. It doesn't bug me at all. Just be ready for me to say something back. <laughs> but but listen, uh, uh, those things are all true. But also true is like I talked about, guys, uh, three and 14 last year. They mm-hmm. are an improving football team. It's good to say, look, the Cardinals are terrible. Well, what are the Bears yeah. then? Mediocre. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, uh, but they mediocre. went from terrible that's to mediocre. Fair. And, that, yeah, oh, that's and that's fair. a great point. Like, they are improving. But, again, mm-hmm. we're ending this season with the one, number one question mark not answered, and that's Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. And, again, he had mm-hmm. that little blip blip on his game of, of, of running well, playing pretty good behind the uh, in the pocket, but then making that interception. So, I just – it's unfortunate. We're seeing the team get better, but the biggest question we wanted answered, to me, is not answered. It's all – I guess it is, is answered. It, it is who he is. He's just not going to get that much better in my eyes with this offensive coordinator. You rush I would for love 200. to sit them both in a room. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Justin Fields right. in a room, ask him what he thinks is wrong, and then put Getsy in a room and ask him what he thinks is wrong. And just get the honest truth. Right? That's what Ryan Pose has to do. He's got to get to the bottom of it all and, and figure it all out because 
as we, you know, 21 points and you're watching an interception is not a good play, but the runs are fantastic. I mean, uh, the Cardinals had nothing for Justin Fields, guys. I mean, uh, every time he carried the ball, they couldn't tackle him <laughs> and he gained yards. It's, it's something to watch him run with the ball. It's just the passing you wonder about. Um, the guy, you run for 250 yards, you dominate mm. time of possession by whatever, nine and a half minutes. You would think it would feel easier than that. That's all. That, I'm not Give the big boys a game ball, Mully. Yeah, well, that's give right. Coach Morgan <laughs> and his guys a game ball. They should. I'm with you. Yeah, when you see mm-hmm. that kind of success in the running game. It's just, I don't know. I, I just felt that there was a moment in that game where I did kind of hesitate where I was wondering if they were hitting their third quarter lull or what, and they they managed to get through it. But I don't I don't know. It's not like you see teams around the league celebrating wins. I don't. I mean, you won, so mm-hmm. feel good about that. And look, you know, they also I believe uh, uh, not that we're not that we care, but I believe Green Bay won by a field goal over Carolina. So. You're two weeks away from potentially having the number one overall pick. But, mm-hmm. you know, these guys are bad. And these guys, you know, the Bears, by virtue of uh, winning the game, and I, I'm not suggesting they shouldn't have, I believe their number one pick, their number one pick falls from five to eight. Well, let's, let's, um, we're talking about big picture and like this game. I think big picture right. wise, if you look at next year's team where you think they should be, this is a game that's put away in the second quarter. The way they started out, they just, you know, That's they it. wiped the game. They're not good enough yet. Justin Fields isn't good enough yet. This team is just not good enough yet to go out there in these December games, and we've been fortunate to play in some of those old and we had good te- uh, seasons, that you could just walk over and the game was over in the middle of the second quarter. You knew they were done, and you just keep piling on them. That's what I was hoping this team could do today, and they couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And that's maybe a little bit of I wanted to see some more growth from this team, but I think they're just not there yet. They're going to be there next year. If they can add pieces and get better on offense, then then you can just bury these teams. And, you know, we're, we're talking about how much they won by, how many uh, yards that Justin Fields throw for. Mm-hmm. Not one of these games that they kind of eked out and it was just kind of a muh. Yeah, the, the, uh, the secondary was good again today, right? I thought yeah. when, when Coach Flues went to man, uh, that the Cardinals gave him a little trouble. But in that zone – uh, T.J. Edwards in that middle, he continues to be ferocious, right? He continues to get after people. Uh, Montez Sweat continues to be a problem on the edge. And, and like you're talking about, Pat, but uh, this is kind of where this team is, right? If, if, if D.J. Moore is playing at 75 to 80 percent and Cole Komet is out, we talked about going into the game, then who are your weapons, right? We talked about the defense and how much assets they have on that side of the ball, how many guys they can turn to if they have problems, like in a secondary when guys get injured, Kyler Gordon making plays today, yeah. right? Uh, 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 off the edge on a blitz, fights for a sack, makes a really good tackle. Uh, Brisker showing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tyreek Stevenson, Jalen Johnson, all these guys. But then you you know already, if DJ, guys, if, 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 if say it to yourself. If DJ Moore and Cole Komet are not at 100%, then your your targets in the pass game are Mooney, Tyler Scott, and Velas Jones. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I just, it, it's just kind of like, when you say it that way, then you know what you're going to get. And look, Atlanta's bringing a better team than we saw today. Yes. So, so they'll get a test. Yep. Right? They'll, they're, 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 they'll be back at Soldier Field again at noon next week, and they'll get a test next week from Atlanta, and, and we'll see what they look like next week. But um, they do win today's game. I know exactly what you guys are saying. What we've been talking about all year is, is the situation they're actually in. They have to make a decision on their quarterback. Yep.